that I'd like to just get up and go. I don't like to, to have too many steps in between me getting out there and shooting something and capturing something. I, I've never felt that those kind of cameras, the, those Canon cameras, particularly now, have ever stood in my way. Hello and welcome to Canon in Motion, our week of exclusive promotions on Canon products, which is pretty much one of our largest ever value add offers. This week at ProV, each Canon product you buy will give you a value which you can spend towards anything on our tailored list of accessories with all kinds of products on there. There's simple things like media and batteries, but there's also Flowtech tripods, on-camera monitors, lenses. The choice is yours. And today we're sitting down with Bobby to discuss how he uses Canon at his production company, Pavilion Films. So Bobby, thank you so much for joining me. My pleasure. Let's um, start by going a little bit into detail on who you are, the sort of work you do, yeah. you know, who are Pavilion Films? Uh, so Pavilion Films is a production company that I founded around about eight years ago now. Um, we predominantly uh, work within like the digital content space. Um, we work for a variety of different brands across different sectors. So we work for the likes of Lego, Uniqlo, TK Maxx, kind of across like retail, beauty, fashion, as well as um, we, we work in kind of like the documentary and the branded content sector mainly. Um, so that's a bit of a background about kind of the, the world that we work within. Um, I myself work within the company as essentially creative director, but I work on most of our productions as both a DP and director. Okay. Um, but I started out as a photographer, actually. So I started out by doing music photography, um, corporate photography, bit of fashion, and it's just kind of evolved over the years to, to shoot in content um, and subsequently set up a production company. So how does Canon fit into what Pavilion Films do nowadays then? Um, I mean, how Canon fits into what we do uh, as a production company is pretty um, substantial in all fairness. Our, our main camera, our main in-house production cameras are Canon. So we've got a C300 Mark II uh, and a C300 Mark III, which we bought recently. Um, I mean, they probably serve like 80% of our of our work. We so also, they're your workhorse, your main one? Yeah, definitely our workhorse cameras. Um, we also work on stills production as well, so we've got like Canon 5DS and, and whatnot as well, oh. Canon lenses, so we shoot uh, Canon for stills predominantly. Um, but we also do live, um, live event production as well, um, so we work on kind of like branded content, live streaming. For that we also use Canon XF705, so yeah. Um, we're pretty much Canon across the board. Some of the more commercial product, other commercial projects, we also will use Arri, we'll use Red, we sometimes use Sony. Um, so it really depends on the project. Um, you know, we're not, we're by no means like exclusively Canon. We use whatever, what, whatever camera, whatever equipment, lighting is appropriate for the project. But I'd say that, yeah, 80, 90% of our, our work is shot on Canon um, and always has been, really. I'd Why say, do you right, think that is? Um, I think, to be honest, I, I, I probably felt most comfortable with Canon coming up as a, as a camera operator and, you know, working my way up jun at junior levels in the industry because the first camera I ever bought as a music photographer was, um, I think it was like the Rebel series, so the, the 350. Yeah. You know those old things? Yeah, yeah, yeah. The little, little DSLRs, screen. yeah. Badass. I remember picking that up for the first time and being like, oh my God, this is insane. I can make a movie with this. And you totally couldn't. I mean... You know, I couldn't. Well, you I could. could. It just would be very compressed. But I couldn't. Then was the point. Oh, I see. Yes, <laughs> that's why. I made it but you know, the, the feeling of the feeling of opening that for the first time, and you know, because I've, I'd, I'd, I, I had, um, I had shot, uh, I'd shot moving image before on DV tape, doing DV capture at university when I was studying. My God, I spent like four or five days uh, doing like the, the the tape ingest and stuff. So when I first opened that up, I was like, my God. My mind is blown. Um, so yeah, I think I just basically bought a 300, uh, sorry, a 350, and then I believe like a 400, 450, then the 500, and I kept like chopping it and changing it, thinking I was getting the next best thing and moving my way up. And that was kind of exciting, and it led me on to buying a 5D like everybody else in our generation and seeing the full frame video for the first time, and that was it, hook, line, and sinker. So I think it was partially, you know, my, my journey with uh, using Canon cameras has kind of just come from a, um, you know, like a familiarity, a place of familiarity. Absolutely. Um, so yeah, I mean, I think that's mainly it. The reasons, I think the, the reasons that Canon really works for me, I th 
part of it's just to do, maybe this is again familiarity, but the ergonomics for me makes sense. Um, I think the familiarity is, a, is an important point because I think they've always done that quite well, or at least certainly of the manufacturers that are out there, they're the ones that do it perhaps the best, where you can pretty much drift from any Canon camera to the other. And yeah, they're all different. The buttons are in a different place, but it all feels more familiar than it can do with some other brands. Yeah. Um, I think they do do, I can see what you mean by the famili familiarity would keep you within the, the yeah. sort of Canon cycle. Definitely. I, I think it's just what, when you pick up, for me, when I pick up a camera, I'm not a humongously technical person. Mm -hmm. I like to be able to pick up a piece of equipment and, and, and execute on what I've got in my head without the equipment being a barrier, you sure. know. And that's not to say that I'm not geeky about equipment because I certainly am. But you it know. does need to disappear. When the moment you is right, it disappear. needs to disappear in the background. Thank you, and it does. And just um, do the job for you. Yeah. I mean, sometimes it actually does disappear because I lose things quite a lot. <laughs> and I must say that I did leave a C300 Mark II in the back of an Uber. Ooh, yeah. that's an expensive tip. It's, I paid him £100 and he came back and he dropped it back off for me. What a Excellent. guy. Um, but no, in terms of like the other, the other elements of Canon, uh, I think it's just when, when you pick it up, the familiarity thing, it's like when you, you can kind of hold the camera they feel i think this is probably what it is thinking about it i come from a stills background and i could pick up a c300 mark ii or a c500 whatever it is even a c70 you pick one of those cameras up and it feels like you're holding a stills camera so that's probably why i'm i feel i feel at home you know as cheesy as that sounds um but yeah i think from a more technical standpoint though uh i think that the colors have always been what i'd imagined what I see and the way I think the colours work. For instance, when I've used Sony, uh, not to say that there's anything wrong with the colours, they don't seem to be in line with what I'm imagining I'm going to get on screen. And that might just be an experience thing and you get used to it. But I think, again, it's being part of an ecosystem and I found that like Canon are, are consistent for me. So how do you think the modern sort of lineup of Canon cameras has sort of fit into the way that you work and change. You just moved from the C300 Mark II to C300 Mark III, for example, but Canon had a huge year last year. You know, they got the R5 and the R6, they had the 1DX Mark III, they had the C300 Mark III, the C500 Mark II, the C70. They just, it, I think Canon released more products in the last year than they have done in my entire career so far. It, it was insane, really. Yeah. Um, how have you found the move to the new, the new generation, if you like? Um, well, yeah, I mean, in terms of them releasing that much product, it was like, it was, it was great and terrible for me because it was just like the biggest Christmas list I knew that I would never be able to buy <laughs> all in one go. So that was, that was really hard, I must say. Um, it, yeah, in terms of moving to the new camera system, I've, I must say I've, I've loved the C300 Mark II. Um, it's probably not been my favourite ergonomic camera to own. Um, Having said that, it's it's all been completely changed and rewritten with the Mark III in terms of the square form factor, the enhanced like modul modularity. That has been a game changer, um, just in terms of the way we rig up and obviously we use uh, the, that kind of a camera body in, in many, many ways on sets and across all different types of production. So whether it's on a gimbal, whether it's on a slider, whether it's handheld, the form factor of the new Canon cinema bodies is just you know, I think that's fantastic. It's obviously moving towards more of a kind of box, kind of obviously Red and Alexa have been doing that with the minis and things like that and the Epics and whatnot. Um, so I think having that uh, kind of, having that kind of form factor and that, that way of using the camera now within the, the cinema EOS lineup is, is really valuable. I think that's, weirdly, it's the biggest change. It's strange to say that the best thing about the, the camera system is the fact that it's a box. That sounds crazy, but that's, well, that's literally my favourite thing. <laughs> I mean, I, I can understand that because it, it, it is a box, but it's also not a box. It, it, it's, sort of, it's almost like an ergonomic box style camera. Yeah. You can strip it back so that it is it behaves like a box, like a red or a Kinefinity or whatever. Mm. Um, but at the same time, you can, with all the bits attached, it feels very much like the C300 Mark II did in some situations. So you can build it up to be both which is really flexible yeah and i think actually uh, touching on the point of ergonomics again i think if, if you think to yourself i mean look look at other things out there on the market in terms of the alexa or look at an alexa mini it is, it is literally a box you know by the time you've rigged those kind of cameras out for the things the kind of work that we do 
I want to be able to have functionality within the camera system. So being able to have everything from like the NDs to the peaking, magnification, everything programmed and available in the side of the camera, you know, and being able to very easily and quickly change cards, batteries, media, all of that kind of stuff within that form factor is awesome. Um, Even also, just simply being able to hold it. And, and, and use that, it, yes. That's actually, yeah. you know, just simply being able to hold a camera comfortably and shoot with it is something that I think people often just don't think about sometimes. Yeah. Um, I Personally, the, the way that I shoot is very much kind of, um, I'd say it's pretty pretty raw. I'd, I'd like to just get up and go. I don't like to, to have too many steps in between me getting out there and shooting something and capturing something. I, I've never felt that those kind of cameras, the, those Canon cameras, particularly now, have ever stood in my way. And that's probably why I've stayed using them. How have you found the image quality moving from the Mark II to the Mark III? Image quality, I mean, it sounds terrible, but I'm, I'm not a big stickler for like quote unquote image quality. Not a pixel uh, peeper. No, I'm not a pixel peeper at all. But I must say I do notice the dynamic range, the shift in the dynamic range between particularly the, you know, the, the amount of extra depth that I get from highlights and shadows. Um, obviously it's got a large dynamic range for, for a camera in its price range for sure. But I think it's the, the, the dual gain ISO um, is, is phenomenal. I, I, I can't say that I'm, again, pixel people and I'm constantly sure. noticing it, yep. but I feel it when I look at it. Um, so we, sh we shot a, um, a short film called The Number 30, uh, kind of first drama um, that I've done. And uh, that, that was shot out in the, the Pennines. Um, it's an absolutely wild location, shift in light, shift in weather. Um, it, was, it was wild, but that was shot on the C300 Mark II. Um, and we were originally going to shoot that on Alexa. Um, so we, we'd, we'd run a couple of tests side by side, had taken the footage to the colorist, um, and the colorist had never really done any drama based stuff on the C300 Mark II. Um, obviously, it wasn't raw, it was, uh, it was MXF uh, internal codec but it literally blew the colorist and well it didn't blow me away because i knew how good it was going to be but the colorist was blown away when he put that on the screen next to the alexa stuff and it's like yeah that's the camera to choose right there um and you know i think what i'm saying is both cameras have always had that kind of um the extra kind of tool you've got in your box for the dual gain iso with the dual gain iso is uh, is phenomenal um and of course now we've got raw um, I've never really been a raw shooter up to now. I've, dib I've, I've dabbled in it, um, of course shot R3D, red files, etc. Um, but never really dabbled in raw properly. Uh, but I'm finding now on like half the productions that we do, I'm shooting raw by default just to give us the extra bit of um, clout in terms of you know, pulling back a bit of highlight here and there. Obviously if you're shooting quickly, um, you haven't got time to, nobody's got time to meter anymore. I've always got a meter on me, but I'm never pulling it out of the bag. Yeah. Um, so yeah, just that little bit of flexibility um, with the raw and the, just the, the depth of the image is, is amazing. Um, and I, to be honest, I just edit on like a 2017 MacBook Pro, you know, by default. We, yeah. we, we do have a more powerful machine, machine but that, that thing is my go-to machine for editing and it handles it with breeze. So I'm happy. So of all the, the projects that you do at Pavilion, um, have there been any recently that you shot on Canon that have stood out a little bit? Yeah, um, a couple. I mean, again, quite a lot of them are shot on Canon, so it's kind of hard to choose. But there was one project we did relatively recently that we that we we just really love working on. Um, it was called Open Letters to Queer Britain. It was a project between um, Levi's and the Post Office. Um, it's on our website, and uh, yeah, it was it was shot. It was kind of a mixed media project. We shot some VHS. We shot some Canon XF 705 and um, we shot on our C300 as well. Um, it was just one of those projects, again, where like the, the, the camera approach was just really meant to not step in the way. It was really about the personalities um, on screen and them telling their stories. Um, I mean, just the, the... So was it a documentary or...? Yeah, it, it was branded content. It wasn't documentary. It, it was basically... Um, uh, Queer Britain are an organisation that are trying to open up um, the first LGBTQ plus uh, museum in the UK. Right. Okay. Um, and Levi's and the post office were working together to get submissions from, from people who wanted to basically put their coming out stories on paper 
um, to write letters like through the po and send through the post office to be displayed in this um, in this museum. Um, and uh, yeah, just some of the some of the people that we met, some of the people that we interviewed and talked to, just like such interesting stories, um, such beautiful things that they wrote, really emotional. Um, it was a very kind of simple setup, um, but it was really just purely about character and. And it was, I think, like just the the approach on that project. We it just really gelled with kind of what we're about. Um, we we always just really enjoy like really honest, um, kind of down to earth kind of production that's really about people. Um, something and, with a bit of heart to it. Yeah, something with a bit of heart. Um, you know, just kind of sto storytelling, people focused storytelling um, is is always something that we love to get our teeth sunk into. And uh, yeah, obviously we'd, we'd been using it like the XF705 um, for predominantly live projects. Uh, we used it on this, this kind of, uh, we used it on this Levi's and post office project just as a B cam, being able to move around and zoom in and out and get a bit more of a, a doco vibe. And then the, the, the C300 that was our A cam just allowed us so much scope in terms of our exposure. We were, were like working in like a, in fact it's a, the space was underneath our offices in Bow, and it was like a empty warehouse space. So there was lots of like dark depth to it, and there was uh, we used like many layers of colour within the space for like set design, coloramas, and things. Um, and the camera just kind of captured the whole thing front to back really beautifully. Um, better than the VHS did. That's for yeah, sure. I bet the VHS. I'm sure. It's a good job it captured it better than VHS. Oh really, my isn't god, it? that VHS <laughs> camera. The thing, that's, that's what Canon are missing out on these days. Those old Panasonic VHS cameras where you have to actually strap the yeah. batteries around you so you look like you're on a tactical assault mission. That's the next step. There we go, I that's think. their 2021 release 2021, schedule. 2021, C300 <laughs> Mark IV. Or IV, yeah. Right, thank you so much for joining me. That was great. My pleasure, man. Thank you. Thanks for having me.